We do exi exist to identify, recover, and prevent spiritual abuse through story, conversation, and community. This is a space where we come together to share and process spiritual abuse. While our content may be controversial, our goal is not to gossip or slander others, but to create a space where people can say, Manasseh, God has made me forget all my trouble. Ish. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, we have a really special guest for you today. Um, our friend Gerald is here with us. Uh, I'm going to read out a little bit about him. He's a father, husband, business owner, gospel recording artist, and podcast host of Lunch with the Cool Kids. Gerald Davis is a person that has served in various churches across the country for the last 20 years and is well versed in the cultural climate of African-American as well as multicultural Pentecostal movements. His worship leading has been known to connect even the most distant person back to God. With over 20 years of ministerial experience, Gerald brings an abundance of experience and wisdom to the con conversation of where the body of Christ has been and where it's going. Gerald, how you doing, man? Man, I'm doing a lot better since I heard their bio. My Lord. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Red carpet treatment over here, man. Man, I got, got that off Fiverr. <laughs> yeah. you know that was it. AI. That was That's AI produced. Another chat GPT. <laughs> Thank you, chat GPT. I, right. <laughs> right, yeah. I'm doing I'm doing wonderful. Um Ish Ruben. Thank y'all. I'm sorry, Ishmael. Let's no, Ish. You can, you can call me Ish. It's cool. My friends call me Ish. Right. Okay, so Ish. But so funny story is that when the first time I met Ish, I like I have no respect for boundaries at all. Um, the first time I met Me Ish, <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, I'm the Ish. <laughs> like, Dude, everybody used to call me that. It's oh. like it was like the green light to for them to cuss. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's as close as I got. So you 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 were my gateway drug into seeing. So I appreciate it. <laughs> I hear that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, yo, Ruben, Ish, thank y'all so much for having me on. And it's uh, certainly an honor to be here. Yeah, um, it's and great. I, I think we're going to have a, I think we'll have an enlightening time. Yeah, it's going to be fun, yes, man. I, I got to know you a little bit um, over the years and um, not enough, though, I would say. And so I, we always have this uh, cool, I think it's pretty cool, this uh, question for our guest. And just to get to know you, breaking the ice some bit, uh, a bit. And uh, can you let me know, the serious question is, uh, what's your favorite cereal <laughs> and why? <laughs> okay, so here's the deal. Right now, if you ask me what's my favorite cereal, what you just did, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. it's nothing because... I'm on keto. Oh, yeah. And uh, so I was an obese, obese man and it got mm -hmm. out of control. So, um, yep. of course, I don't want to lose it the natural way. So let's cheat and do keto. So um, <laughs> that's natural. That's natural. <laughs> no, it's not. It's your body <laughs> trying to not to die. That's what keto, <laughs> that's what ketosis is. Your body trying not to die. It works. <laughs> It works, dude. And I lost 50 pounds. I lost 50 pounds and I've been able to keep it off because of keto. So praise God for keto. Really? Mm -hmm. Maybe that's another show for another time. <laughs> yeah. Um, my favorite cereal. God, that's tough, man. Um, I'm going to have to say Captain Crunch. I'm yes. Captain Crunch. There you go, man. Ruben. The the basic one or the the peanut butter only or oops all berries crunch berries crunch berries yeah, um, that's where you lost sir. you lose me there. yeah no you should be found because mm -mm. crunch <laughs> berries it's sweet so it's too when much you, no when you, it's cereal it's okay let's define what cereal is because cereal is processed sugar that's so mm -hmm. it yeah. ain't, it is nothing natural about sugar. No, you know I'm what? Simple guy. I take that back. I lied to all of y'all. Okay, so that's my all-time <laughs> favorite uh cereal, Captain Crunch. But my um but my adult cereal. Don't <laughs> judge me, don't laugh at me. I'll eat this all day. I'll eat this 
I was gonna, I was gonna call y'all cool kids. This ain't cool kids. This is <laughs> this is not my show. But this is, um, <laughs> this is Manassa. <laughs> Manassa kids. Oh, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, my favorite adult cereal is yeah. vanilla almond special K with oh. vanilla almond milk. Yeah. I love oh, that too. not the almond milk. You know what? Since we're, milk. since we're talking about adult cereals, I gotta mention this. Have either of you ever had? I I, I think this is the name, Cracklin O'Bran, or Kraken O'Bran. What the heck is that? That's like if some you, special Walmart brand. No, I I have it on my fridge. I'm tempted to go get it so I can show you guys. No, go no, get no. It. Um, we'll stall. Go get it. <laughs> okay, I'll go get it real quick. Oh, oh my no. gosh. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh my gosh! <laughs> we're just gonna stall and like laugh. That's all we're gonna do because I have nothing to fill this space with. No, play a guitar. Play. You know, <laughs> yeah, guitar. right. Like, million, four, four, four. Okay. there you go. All right, educate this... us. Can you see it? Okay. Yeah. Catalogs, Cracklin O'Brand. They're little squares like that. Um, yeah. Take one out. Sorry, this is a little bit of ASMR. Is a lot. This is turning into a cereal podcast. Hold on. My wife put other cereal in there. Okay, look. It's this little square. And this it's so good. good. Here, yeah. here's, the, here's the thing. It looks no, it looks boring and it looks whack. Yeah, it does. But if you look at how much <laughs> sugar it has, it has where's the sugar at? A lot. No, I could imagine. No, I'm looking like a fool. It has it has more sugar than any other cereal, basically. It that's has 16 that's, grams of sugar. That's so this dumb. Is, it's like cookies, is what I'm trying to say. It's good. It's try just it. Eat, just eat Captain Crunch. I don't know. That's no, I, I promise you, it's not. A, it'll be worth it. Try it. It's a little bit expensive, but it's worth it. Shout out to um um Roll for Cereal on TikTok. He has like a TikTok channel where he talks about cereal and he reminded me of that cereal and i went and got it again and, and crackling oak brands is what he reminded you of <laughs> well he so roll for cereal we're getting so off track but roll for cereal he crafts cereal bowls based off of like dice rolls i'll i'll send you guys one later yeah and he he's like a cereal historian like he's actually a, a show producer who like knows a bunch about hip hop and like cereal and it's it, watch I guarantee you after this when I show There's you guys everything. It, you guys are both gonna be like this is actually pretty cool. I'm, <laughs> I'm interested now. I like I don't even want to talk about like George Abuse and Hills. I just want to forget. <laughs> this. <laughs> you telling Anyways. me, man? It's it's been hard to prepare for this, man. I've been I've been yeah. <laughs> All yeah, the preparation and here we fun. are. <laughs> I know. I know, stalling. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for thanks for answering that question, Gerald. Um, so let's get into the real real reason why we're why we're all here today. As you mentioned, we are talking about the Hillsong documentary called "The Secrets of Hillsong" by FX. It is available on Hulu and I believe other streaming services, but I know for sure Hulu. It's a four part uh, documentary series documenting. The Rise and Fall of Carl Lentz, Brian Houston, and Hillsong, um, The Church. If you're not familiar with any of those guys, you might know Carl Lentz. He was uh, the leading pastor of Hillsong NYC, and he was known for being Justin Bieber's pastor. And then he famously, um, basically, he had, a, had an affair, and it was pretty public. And uh, he was fired from Hillsong and all these other things. And then Brian Houston is a founder of Hillsong, and he's notable now because of um, because of the legal the legal issues he's having regarding um, sexual abuse and his father. So, and then lastly, I should probably explain Hillsong a little bit. If you don't know about Hillsong, and you've been to church, you probably sang one of their songs before. Mm -hmm. um, at their peak, they were in over thirty countries with one hundred fifty hundred thousand congregates. So they. They were a big church, but they've obviously dwindled down in the last last uh, I guess several years or so. Yeah, but that's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, if you haven't seen the documentary, I recommend you go watch it. Um, I guess I guess this is kind of a spoiler because we're going to be talking about what happens in the documentary. I mean, yeah, but it's on the go, news for crying out loud. Yeah, it's on the news. Go watch it. Um, I'm sure you you can listen to this without watching it, but 
I would recommend watching it if if you feel comfortable with it. But um, so yeah, what's what are you guys your guys is uh, initial reactions uh, to the pod or not the podcast the documentary? Gerald, um, it was a lot. It was a mm-hmm. lot. It was a lot. Um, it was a lot for me to watch. It was a lot for me to sit through. Um, but like I couldn't turn away because for me and for a lot of us, that was that was the twenty tens. That was a whole decade of yeah. a lot of our lives. And like that's when mm-hmm. a lot of us came into prominent prominence. You know what I mean? Like I was uh oh man, um 2010, how old was I? I was I was mid twenties. Twenty seven, I think. I was twenty so twenty seven to thirty seven. Like those are major, major, major years. It's like when you mm-hmm. like you're kind of sort of an adult, not really, but then like you are for real one. So mm-hmm. that whole time was and then we can get into this a little bit later, not specifically, but like that whole time, me and my wife, we had moved all the way across country, new new state, new culture, new experience. And we we joined a basically a CCM church basically. And for what I knew, I thought that that was like, you know, that was the trend, <laughs> the, you know, the LED lights and the mm-hmm. dark rooms and the smoke and the guitar and the, mm-hmm. you know, everybody sing and the skinny jeans and the Chelsea boots and that whole thing. <laughs> I thought that that was like the hipster movement up until I saw the Hillsong documentary. And I was like, Oh, Mm-hmm. It was just copying heel song mm-hmm. <laughs> all the time, all this time. Yep. So yep. like, so it it took me it took me back, and then it was just like a lot of it was sad, a lot of it made me angry, a lot of it I was like, and that's it. It was a lot. I I mm-hmm. we can we'll go into it, but it it yeah. was a lot to take. It was a lot to take on as a as a young christian who came into prominence in that time yeah yeah for me it was uh i mean similar man like it was a lot it definitely definitely was i grew up watching or i'm sorry listening to hillsong um like playing hillsong uh like watching you know skits from them and just you know, not not much the, like the preaching because I, I I was not really interested <laughs> in anyone's preaching there in that time, um, so I was more <laughs> concerned about music and it was going on uh, with that. And so, I mean, dude, everyone knew who Hillsong was, even those people that were not churchgoers. You know what I mean? Like they would they would just you know they know that it was a Christian band, right? They won a and, freaking Grammy, bro. Everyone, knows. yeah. Yeah, everybody knew. So um, really, really interesting to just kind of dive into that story in the documentary, but also remembering there was this movie around the time when Oceans, if you guys remember that song, Mm -hmm. uh, huge, massive massive song uh, around that time, a documentary came out about like Hillsong worship. And it talked about like all of these like different things um, that that they're they're going through as songwriters and like the the whole story about that. And at that time, like I connected a lot with it because um, I remember a lot of things were very similar to an, to the experience that I I I was a part of, but also at the same time seeing other people go through that process and hearing the same thing. And at that, at that time I felt like, Oh yeah, this is uh this is, this is normal. This is like what all the big, you know, churches or Christian bands are doing. And they're mm-hmm. all like sacrificing. They're all putting in labor without like, you know, getting any, any, any uh, payment in return. They're doing all these things. Um, and, and it's normal, right? It was, it was, it was righteous of, of, of them and, 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 the people that I knew that uh, were sacrificing. And then um, now going back at it and looking at what the documentary presented in, especially an episode, uh, I believe it was episode, uh, 
well, all of them really talked about the music. And so just kind of hearing how uh, different musicians and things like that were treated. I mean, it was just, mm. it was just an echo for me. So, yeah. 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 I think um, <clears throat> for me, uh, you know, after, after the whole Ravi Zacharias thing, like what, what was the Ravi Zacharias? Ravi Zacharias was like probably at the forefront of Christian apologetics for the last, I don't know, decade or so. Mm-hmm. And he he ended up passing away. And he this is like big, big time guy. Um yeah, pretty big. He ended up passing away. And when he passed away, it came out that he had all these sexual allegations and that he had, you know, had these women side sign NDAs. He owned a massage parlor and like he had been paying hey, to Robbie? keep this woman quiet. <laughs> um multiple. And, but yeah, multiple. But Ravi was Ravi was big, like Bro, when he, he was died. Big. Everyone was talking about, oh shoot, Robbie passed away. I, like, and he's he's like a sheep, dude. He was like really, my gosh, I would never in a million years would have thought that. Yeah, of, of him. especially him. Um, after he after that happened with him, it's like, I I kind of think of that quote from Andy Minio. It's from one of his songs. He says, "All all of my heroes are frauds, just like me," and it's like. Mm-hmm. All these dudes are human, and like I, I guess sometimes I wouldn't think that they're human, or yeah. like you don't really think of them as humans that would mess up. But when they do, you're kind of surprised. But I feel like, I, like I was saying after Ravi, I'm like, anything's really on the table. Me, yeah. To to me, yeah. I just feel like um, if anything, it reminded me of, and like I don't, I don't mean to sound cliche, but it reminded me of why we're doing this podcast, like. Mm. sometimes honestly honestly sometimes there's there's times where i question like are we doing the right thing like am i tripping am i going too far like should i just stop doing this and when i when i see like the damage that that like church can have on people not everybody but when i see that and i think about it and i think about my my story i'm like there's no way I should stop talking about this. Like this is an important issue and uh, it needs to be addressed because people, people are dealing with it. And like, mm-hmm. I'm sure so many people saw that, that Hillsong documentary and resonated it and like are looking for a community um, or others to like, you know, figure it out or like process it at the very least. Yeah. yeah you know, so that go for it. No, I was going to, Oh man, I, I don't, I don't want to chase rabbits because we got a lot to get to, but mm-hmm. there, it, a couple of things that I thought of, Ruben, while you were talking is like, we should probably do a whole separate show about like the black experience. Oh, <laughs> yes, does. yes, um, yeah, dude, that that in itself, that episode was crazy, man. Like, there's so much to talk about though that on that it, side. So there are there are two different worlds in the in the north american church specifically america like in, in the pentecostal side let me say that um I, I call it the ccm side and the gospel side so and the two up until 2010 very rarely cross-pollinated so ruben like when you're saying like the zacharias guy stuff like that like, like, he, and now he was like Jesus Junior. I have no idea who he was. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? And like, yeah. it's it's a testament of how far apart, like, we actually are, yeah. and how significant the Hillsong movement was, mm. because mm-hmm. it wasn't it wasn't the preaching. Because like, I I full transparency. Right? I still haven't heard of Carl Lynn's message. Yeah, yeah. Me either. Yep. Me either. You, you know what I mean? Like I've seen clips or whatever the case, but I, I, I still haven't. Um, yeah. But I know the songs. Mm-hmm. And, and mm-hmm. the songs are the things that merge, brought us as close as merging together as possible. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which is absolutely crazy. It is. Because yep. It was all built on lies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So just for the record, that's a whole nother conversation. Yeah, for sure. Which I think we'll we'll get into that 
uh, once we start talking about more about the music musical experience or the musician experience in it all. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, just with that, like, were you guys triggered? Because I know I was. I I, I said it at the, at the beginning of mm -hmm. everything. Like, I'm over here triggered. And, like, um, you know, for those who don't know, like, that's, you know, when you have a little bit of PTSD or a version of PTSD, you know, little words and phrases and images mm -hmm. and memories can trigger s certain emotions. And so um, mm -hmm. I know I did. Um, what about yeah. you, Ruben? Yeah. Um, for the record, I was laughing because he said Jesus Jr. I thought that was yeah. funny. But yeah. um, the, so this, this wasn't really like a highlight of the show, but um, there was a small portion that talked about this girl that was a part of Hillsong, Kansas City. And she talked about uh, going back to what Gerald was just talking about. She was like the token black person at Hillsong. She was in all the videos, um, any mm -hmm. photography that they did, like they kind of highlighted her to show that they were a diverse ministry. Um, and I guess at some point she came to church on a Sunday morning and she was approached by the pastor's wife. And basically was told, like, hey, I heard you've been talking trash about our church. And I forget what she said in between. But basically, she told her, like, you need to leave our church right now. And if you don't, we have police that are going to escort you out. And she talked about how she, like, how this was happening and how people that she's known and spent so much time with over the past few years were watching this happen and not saying anything and not doing anything about it and how like that was the last day she ever went to church and like she doesn't break down in tears but and she smiles but you could tell that like that's a deep wound right there mm -hmm. yep. and for me i i mean i can't help but think about my own personal experience um that i shared before about uh, a former pastor approaching me and like there there were people for sure there that seen it happen and some of them did say something to me not to him um, but I do think about some of those people that were there that saw it and like definitely had the power to say something. I think about them and I think about, um, just like think like the whole idea of like, I've known these people for years. Like these people are my friends, my so-called leaders, pastors, whatever. And they couldn't say nothing. It was just like, not, mm -hmm. not, they couldn't say nothing. They chose not to say nothing. Um, yeah. that's. That's that's tough. And um, even the whole like the way she said, hey, I heard you're talking crap about our ministry. That was like almost verbatim what was told mm -hmm. to me. And like I I think about like and the why confusion. And yeah. The topic I, I, as to why too? I, I think about the confusion, though, like when I was approached, I was just like, Wait, what are you like? What are you talking about? Like and then it, to think that like a pastor would do that, like. Mm -hmm. uh, and, yeah it, it takes me back um it like it, it, it like makes me like it makes me like it gets gets me worked up like my my body starts feeling like shaking and stuff but um that's yeah. the most triggering for me i think i've worked through it enough to where i'm not gonna like stay up all night thinking about it at this point but it definitely like brought me back to that um yeah mm. yeah yeah i wouldn't um i wouldn't necessarily say that i was triggered um i felt deeply sad mm -hmm. i felt deeply sad um for the people um i felt sad for because i man i i've i've always been and I've, i feel like i still am like probably <laughs> probably to my detriment um I've, I've always felt like that i'm a people person like i care about the people i like you know the I think the ministry will be fine. I think the program will be fine. I think the auxiliary will be fine. But like, I care about the people because when you, there was an old, there was an old white hippie. I'm sorry. I feel like I'm super racist, but <laughs> like, I, <feel laughs> I like, I, I like my political Man. correctness filter isn't happening today. So y'all yeah. forgive me. I, I love you, bro. I do. I'm all good, man. Okay. So there was a, there was old, there was old white hippie uh, Jesus guy in California, and he was like the coolest guy ever. Like, I mean, he he would, he'll be in flip flops and in a tank top, and like prophesy your address. You know what I mean? Like he was, 
He was just so cool. And um, and he said something in passing. That's why I like sitting around old people because they there's just so much wisdom. Mm-hmm. Um, he he said, you got to be careful about building relationships in ministry because when you build relationships based off of ministry, when the ministry is over, so is your relationship. Mm-hmm. And yeah. um, and like if you're a lifelong church kid, like you know that, but you may not necessarily have the words, but you've always like kind of felt that thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and like so when mm-hmm. I watch when I watch that, uh, and she was giving that you know she was giving that testimony and like you know all of that stuff. Um, I, like I I wasn't surprised because that's that's not a Hillsong thing. That's a church thing. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. it, it don't matter the denomination. It don't matter the race, creed, or color. Like once you're out, you're out. Yep. And it's all good once you're in, and you're you know you're fighting the same cause because what would happen? What happens is that like once you're in and you're rocking and rolling, and s- like some somebody talks crap about something that you're a part of then Mm -hmm. you get defensive too. Mm -hmm. And it's Mm -hmm. not necessarily that you're getting defensive based off of what specifically was said is that this person is attacking my belief Mm -hmm. and like not my belief in Jesus and the, you know, the cross and the Christ and all that stuff, Mm -hmm. but it's, it's the belief of the thing that I gave my whole life to your identity, your identity. And if you don't have an identity outside of this, which the church yep. doesn't teach. <laughs> uh-huh, say that again. The church does not teach an identity oh. outside of its structure. So we're so dependent on it. And oh my God, how mm. many times did somebody get prophesied to that you're going out to the nations? Like, oh my God, all of 20, all of the 90s and 20, 2000s. Everybody, everybody going out. Everybody. Everybody, everybody going to the nations. And that's not matter. That's not one specific denomination. That's, I mean, it was they were going to the nations and the Church of God of Christ. They were going to the nation and so that. <laughs> so you know what I mean. Like everybody was holding on to this thing that you know God's going to use me and He's going to send me out to the nations, which mm-hmm. really was code for I don't want to get a job. But <laughs> for some know. people, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I totally see that. There's a lot of people that were like that for sure. No. I. <laughs> I shared a, I shared a room with some of those people. So yeah, well, I don't need a job. I'm going out to the nations. So mm-hmm. you mean the For nations sure. in unemployment? But the but the but the point is is that so I like I I understand why somebody was like, hey, you're talking crap about us, but like we're it's very easy to process that and like see how messed up that is as we're sitting mm-hmm. on our couches mm-hmm. watching a documentary, mm-hmm. right? But when you're rocking and rolling every, you know, Monday, Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, all the meetings for, you know, Friday, Saturday and stuff like that, like you're in it. You you can't see how crazy that is. So, mm-hmm. yeah, um, you know, so, yeah, I, I, I was just very I was just very sad for the people yeah. who gave their life to that thing. Yeah, I, I just uh, I think about what you said about um about like once the what the old hippie guy said <laughs> to yeah. you he's a um, cool guy man he's cool. such a cool guy i'm so, uh, very wise for sure and i and i feel like i hope i wish that more of that has been would be spoken um and it's kind of hard because like for example for hillsong one of the taglines was what welcome home mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. so you making you making the church like a home uh but in in essence Really, if you look at how it was structured with NDAs and like leadership hierarchies and even the type of diversity or lack of thereof, it looked like more like an organization. You know what Mm -hmm. I mean? Mm -hmm. And so I and I and I totally I totally understand how like that would not that would not uh, feel right for me to like oh well you know i'm I'm not part of their team so i'm not going to be i'm not going to be called upon like a family member anymore but that's the problem that's the problem like 
when people are hurting and people are like wanting some refuge and whatever it is, whether like their mom is has cancer or they just got out of drug, got off of drugs or something of that, of that sort that they need God, they need some sort of faith. Um, they're probably we're probably we are looking for a family, a home in a yeah. sense, you know. And so when when the cor a corporation acts like a home, it's like. Yeah, it's a bait and switch, man. And then a lot of people, when that thing stops, when you start giving back to the corporation, what is what? I mean, I'm not getting checks from my old jobs. You know what I mean? I'm not getting hellos all the time from my old and my old coworkers or my old boss. You know yeah. what I mean? Uh, but my mom does check in on me sometimes. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. my older sisters check on me sometimes. And so when you're in it in the in the ins and outs you feel like the, the people around you are family. And when that is taken away, it's kind of like a rude awakening. And, um, and I do feel sad for them, like what you said, but from, from, from my perspective, I was, I, I feel like my story, I, I was triggered because of that simple, like pr a part of like welcome home. I was like, man, I thought I was welcome home all the time like i could go to my mom's at any time as i as i want to you know and mm -hmm. uh and once i understood like that that's not the case that was just a nice tagline um then it you know that's why i, I became triggered i want to read something a tweet from dan white jr uh he's a guy from twitter that i love that he talks about church hurt and church abuse and he says this when you're structured like a corporation and you say the church is family you're communicating a cliche and everyone knows it, mm. you know, and uh, I saw that tweet. And I was like, you know what? That's very true. And <laughs> and I, I could see that Hillsong was just a cliche, you know, so. That's interesting. That's yeah. Interesting. Uh, um, so they're throughout the whole documentary. Um, they highlight Carl Lentz more specifically in the two first episodes. Um, but they kind of highlight this whole celebrity culture that was uh, kind of like at the forefront of um, of his like image, I guess. Like mm. tabloids featured Carl Lentz. Carl Lentz was on TV. Carl Lentz was on Instagram with Justin Bieber, with all these people. He baptized Justin Bieber, did all these different things. So they kind of highlighted the whole celebrity pastor thing. Um, I just wanted to ask you guys what you think about the whole celebrity pastor and the hype beast thing. But before you answer, I do I do want to want to uh, tell this short little story about when I first met Gerald a couple weeks ago. Um, it was funny because I had heard I had heard about Gerald before. This was like, come five, on now, you, you got to know her, Gerald. Ago. I had heard come about on. him because he was leading. Uh, worship at a church that was in our 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 ministry, our denomination, mm -hmm. and I had known that that church they put out quality work. So me hearing like, oh, this guy Gerald is leading worship there. I, oh, this guy's like this guy big time. This guy is he's a celebrity. He's a high priest or high oh, worship leader. I don't know what you want to call it, but it was funny because when I told him that, Gerald, you could share your response. If you remember it, yeah, I, I said something to something to the effect of, like, I mean, I appreciate it, man, but you have such a low bar for a celebrity. <laughs> he, like, he, he was like, "What a stupid thing!" Like, like, yeah, like, yeah. like my just, lord, like if 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 somebody who's leading worship at a church, like, if that's a celebrity, then mm -hmm. what? <laughs> where are we at <laughs> you know what i mean and like and it's not a um I, okay i i think it'll tie into what we're going to talk about but like mm -hmm. i don't necessarily I, I don't like i don't blame you i don't think that you're a loser ruben <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> not openly <laughs> <laughs> but like what does that say about the culture that we're in yes that, yeah. that the people who have the mic on the big stage has more of a presence than anybody else mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like but but i mean that's i don't think that that's church and once again y'all i'm i'm sorry mm -hmm. i'm go for it man I, I don't think that that's church culture i think that that's culture culture mm -hmm. like 
we naturally think that if we see somebody on Instagram and they have a hundred thousand followers, oh, they're a big deal. Yep. Yep. We have no idea what they do. And somebody can do the same thing, same content, same whatever, but they have 500 followers and like, oh man, I'm not going to like them. I, I, you know, they, whatever. So that's, that's just our, that's what we lean towards. And it's a, it's a terrible thing, but it's a reality. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I don't think it's responsible for pastors to take advantage of that yes yes yes. like that's how that's how a lot of these churches are being built like that's how new york was built like you know what i mean like mm-hmm. that people hillsong, want new york. people mm-hmm. want hillsong new york yeah people want to be around celebrities mm-hmm. so in a sense it's a it's a it's a bit of marketing it's a bit of church growth let me make myself a celebrity so people want to be around me and they come through the church. But the only problem is you can't measure church health by church growth. Mm-hmm. Word. Mm-hmm. So, so true, you're so the a, a very <laughs> a very practical way of, of of an example of that is that like when you have a tumor, everything around it immediately swells up to protect it. Mm-hmm. So like <laughs> That's where you have this big old bolt. So you have growth, but it ain't healthy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so, <laughs> and so yeah. much of ourselves, uh, especially in the, in the 2010s, in the age of the mega church, everybody want to be mega, everybody want to be big, and you know, all of this good stuff, is that we gonna get them in by hook or by crook. Mm-hmm. And the church is growing, but it's getting sicker and sicker and bigger and bigger. So Ruben, to answer your question directly, I think that the celebrity culture in the church is one of the most detrimental things that's happening in the modern church. The other is the spirit of entrepreneurialism. Mm. Um, Because now everybody has something to sell. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But but yes, the celebrity, my God, I hate it. I hate it. Well, I'll I'll say this real quickly. Um, In the in the um in the last in the in the church that we all frequented um mm-hmm. i you know i don't know i like i'm i'm black and i'm and i sweat and i have a lot of energy so you know that i guess that made me a thing <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> so it's the sweat it's the, the anointed sweat it's, it's just it's just the sweat so <laughs> so um like and god would god would really move in the times that he would allow yeah. you know me to minister and for us to minister in that way um what i and my wife always thought shout out to danielle hey. you know she's awesome by the way she is she's great she, man she's great she's a jerk but she's awesome when <laughs> uh, <laughs> she always used to, yeah, no, I love uh, she always used to criticize me but it was one of the things that i had to do and i still do to a degree is that when we would be in a service and God would move. And naturally when something good happens, everybody want to come. Oh my God, that was so good. Mm -hmm. What I would intentionally do is if there was a service like that, I would hide in the green room for like 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Just, just so people wouldn't have that opportunity to come. Yay, 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 yay me. Mm -hmm. And, and that was my way of saying, God, I'm just a servant. Mm-hmm. And and I don't mm-hmm. you know and I don't need that praise and I don't even want that praise, um, mm-hmm. but um, let me say this real quick, Ruben, because I see I see you're about to say something. <laughs> let me let me say this real quick. Um, I think a, especially in church, I think a lot of the celebrity culture comes from people not being cool in real life. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Mm-hmm. That's a bomb. <laughs> so you, you, you know, you yeah. had, you was always the weird church kid who was, you know, in the world and out of the world and all that good stuff. And then you're in, the midst, <laughs> you're in the midst of purity culture and, you know, all, you know, all of this happening and you, you were a, you know, Hey, no, res- you know, respect to everybody, but you were a geek and loser in school 
and in your neighborhood, but because you have this particular challenge, talent in church. So now mm -hmm. in church, you're an all star. Word. So you've never yeah. had people like clamor to you and want to be around you and want mm -hmm. to pull from you in any other scenario. So now this thing is is feeding the nerd in regular uh, regular world. Mm -hmm. so, so now this is your whole life. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, mm -hmm. yes, for Jesus and yes, for the anointing and for the, you know, for the vision and all of this good stuff. But mm -hmm. a lot of it is for my ego. Mm -hmm. Because I was yes. never really comfortable with myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. You know, the ego is part of the the celebrity you know, culture that we have that we're living in right now. It's, it's like the entrepreneur, even I would say a, a part of it of the entrepreneurial uh, spirit as well. Like mm. this social media blast uh, in, into this new era where we could see everything or we could see what people want to show and the comp, the compromise of like, man, they're doing cool stuff, man. They're going to Disneyland. Oh man, they're good. They're going They're mm -hmm. speaking to like two, 300 people. Oh, Hey man, mm -hmm. that person is writing music or, you know, and all these other comparisons just start, you know, mm -hmm. building up It's because of the lack of, of confidence and ego is not a bad thing. Like it's, no. it's not, we all have ego. Um, but, but the, but the fact is that you start comparing each other's ego mm -hmm. and you don't put the ego where it, it belongs is it's, it's what, what the Lord has called us to be and to identify by how he sees us, not by what we want to see ourselves in or what we are seeing our neighbors in. Right. And so I, you, you know, you, you hit it right on the head, like the, the whole mindset of like, man, I'm not good enough. And this is like me pushing me to do more here in this ministry because I am like, I'm more popular here or I'm finding success. Um, mm. yeah, man, it's a good, it's, it's a real thing. Like, I, I think that's why I, I spent, um, more years than I should have in the ministry and uh, the previous ministry that I was in because I found success. Like I, 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 I saw a lot of things, uh, come to life and I realized, uh, that this is something of a talent that I had and, um, and it could become addicting, but also it could become a, an identity, right? And so when you pull yeah. that away, it just falls apart. And I, you know, something that you talked about with like the tumor analogy that you said, um, Carl mm -hmm. Lentz in his in his interview, which by the way, I know a lot of people are going to talk crap about him or like, oh, you know, he's a cheater and all this other stuff, you know. And I totally get it. I'm not, I'm not excusing that at all. But I am saying is that it does take a lot of guts to actually come on on camera and actually mm -hmm. talk about your stuff like that. And especially because it's going to last forever. Like it's on Hulu for crying out loud. Like mm -hmm. yeah. Everyone's going to see that. Like everyone knows you're, you're, you're trash. I didn't even know about half the things that Carl Lentz went through because of yeah. the documentary. I, I, I found out about the nanny issue and all these other things. Right. But what, I, what I'm trying to say is that Carl – um, before everything exploded, he did come to Brian, his his the 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 senior pastor of Ch uh, Hillsong Church, and told him like, man, I don't I don't think I could do this anymore. Like, I don't want to do this. And um, and Brian told him that uh, that ah, don't don't cry. Like, pretty much, don't cry <laughs> about it because uh, if you're doing seven services on a Sunday, which that's what Carl Lentz was complaining about, he said that Brian at his age was doing 11 and so he was the pressure was constantly flowing from the top and oh. and pressuring carl now is that all true is that something that he's just finding an alibi to get out of like the 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 responsibility of his downfall um maybe but it does sound very familiar to me it does sound familiar to what i've seen mm -hmm. in other yeah cultures mm -hmm. and churches and i'm not even talking about my own church i'm talking about like just churches and even in business and like in companies where people are being exploited by their bosses or their organization because you know they're 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 being pressured to to produce um 
But so, yeah. you know what? And that's I think that that's something that um, that's something that our culture doesn't our society doesn't want to admit. Um, and that is whether it's whether it's the church and I'm not talking about like, you know, 30 people, God bless them. And they got a storefront and, you know, they when those when those 30 people age out and die, so does the church. I'm not talking about that church. And I, I say that kind of funny, but I'm yeah, I've been around. I, it's it's more <laughs> than you think it's mm-hmm. more than you think. But um, but really in a church that's moving um it's a lot like the corporate world in the sense of the mm-hmm. higher you go the less fair it is true it's it's just it's just the mm-hmm. truth like the 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 whole family thing that you were talking about ish like i mean i do believe that it's family for um <laughs> for a certain the select people, yeah for, no, uh, for the people that fill the pews for the Sunday oh, I members, see. I see for the Wednesday saying. members, yeah. When you have something, when you have something going on, you will get counseled. But for the leadership, when you got something going on, you'll get disciplined. Mm-hmm. If that, be- because we need you to be Produce. quote unquote whole, so you can go minister to the people in the pews. Wow, that's good. So, that, so that they feel like family, True. so that they can invite their family, so that the church can grow. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it's it's hard and it's unfortunate, but it's the truth. You have to know that the higher you go, the less rights you have, and mm-hmm. it's not fair, but it's it's yeah. a truth that you have to either accept or not. Hmm. Yeah, and I and I think that's why like I have to say that I don't believe that celebrity churches or like mega churches is really a, a healthy environment. Like I don't mm-hmm. I honestly don't I don't think now I don't know what's going to happen in my future, but I don't ever think I'll be ever able to go to a church more than a couple hundred or like a hundred or 200 people. Like honestly, even the church I go to right now, it's very small, but my gosh, like, um, you know, I found healing. I found like, I, I, I found, a, a a place where I could love to worship again. Um, and it's small dude. It, it, everyone knows each other. It's not like, I don't feel like we're organized or we're religious. We're just there to worship God, you know, and, and, uh, and learn, you know? So I don't know. I, I cannot, even though I do love, I love the past and I, and I, and I saw good from it. I, I wouldn't be able to trade it in for the, for what, like what I find myself in right now. And I just say that from experience. Now, is there other mega churches out there that might be healthier that are in a healthy mindset i don't know i i hear some things here and there but honestly every single one every single mega church is like yeah i don't i i can't i can't back them up i can't co-sign hmm. Hmm. i think it's hard though i think it's hard and i like i'm not a i'm not a mega church pastor i'm uh <laughs> I, but i th- i think it's i think it's hard because the bigger it grows the bigger it grows and you know this is my humble philosophy you know but the bigger it grows the smaller it has to become because like the people get so lost and if you're if you're so big that you can walk in and walk out and nobody says anything to you then you it gives you license to not be accountable and it gives you license to not be a disciple and that's mm-hmm. that's what Jesus what well, Jesus was going. He's like, hey, go out and make disciples. Mm-hmm. He didn't say go out and make a mega church. He said go out and make disciples. <laughs> mm-hmm. And and the issue and the issue is is that we're so because we measure in America we measure success by growth and by numbers. We're losing disciples mm-hmm. and 
and the and the, and the American Christian is the is the weakest version of a Christian probably in <laughs> the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm not not even in the world in the history of Christianity. Oh. Yeah. Because there's it's so much uh like it's so much compromise and there's and and as a culture in America we're so afraid to confront to grow because we don't want to hurt feelings. We don't want them to stop paying tithes. We don't want them to go on social media and blast us. So We'll let so much <laughs> go and uh for the sake of okay, well there as long as they're there. Mm -hmm. But like who are you know, we we're the most tongue talking, you know, shouting, dancing, going live, powerless church. <laughs> <laughs> going live. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? And <laughs> and for a for a for a for a mega church. Mm-hmm. For, for a mega church, you for a church to be successful, you got to be in people's lives. They're not going to change by just coming. And I think that that's where tying this back to Hillsong, like there was so it, man, it was so crazy. Like all of the all of the people in the situations and the things that were going on in Hillsong. And there were there's even some people that I know that like went to Hillsong at that period of time. And they were like, Oh yeah, it was like, everything was going on, you know, whatever, you know, yeah. anything that was a thing was going on at that time. But Hey, yeah, you know, it sucks. come as you are, but that's not the gospel. Mm -hmm. That's not the gospel. And the, and the mega church, yeah. it, it's got to get that right. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. Ish, I'm, I'm with you. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm not God. I can't. I, I don't say yeah. what works and what doesn't work. But For sure. but what I do know is that there are so many people who are using the mega church to check that Christianity box off, but not actually live a surrendered life to Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. 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 And it, you know, and I'm not trying to like bring any judgment if you like go to go to a mega church or anything like that. I'm just saying a little judgy. No. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm just saying that that the Christian lifestyle doesn't look like what you think it does if you just been at a mega church. Like mm. it's very, very different from mm -hmm. what you're experiencing on a day to day. Like your Christian lifestyle is not it it is not um it is not founded on the four walls of the building that you go to and the led that you watch and the singer that are is singing the songs that you like on the sunday morning or tuesday nights or wednesday nights or friday nights um but it's about how you are at work how you, who you are in christ and how you treat your family what you do with your life, um, how do you treat others at work with uh, when you are pissed? Uh, what do you do uh, when a <laughs> pastor is actually uh, not doing the right thing? You know, it's it's all mm -hmm. of that. It's it's beyond the four four walls. And I feel like sometimes we, like you said it perfectly, man, Gerald. Uh, like just checking off the the Christian like checkbox uh, on Sunday mornings and everyone has their own process and sanctification takes its time uh with with a lot of us like for me too i mean <laughs> I, i'm far from that um but i i also do know that we need to desire a closeness uh we we should desire a, a more intimate relationship with god uh even though that the church that hurt us um is still there still open still reaching new people uh mm -hmm. it, it, you know it's still that so um i, I want i wanted to ask you guys this like this because this is something that i hear i heard back in my old church and i heard it on the documentary and it's this phrase saying god's hand must be upon it or the church if they have so much success right mm -hmm. and so um mm -hmm. what do you do what what do you say to that in defense to a church that did everything that they did so much good did come from it. Like all the songs and, and, and all the people that came out of it that actually learned about Christ um, and the pastors, there's, there must be good pastors, good leaders that came from Hillsong. What do you like? How do you reconcile the good and the bad? Like, do you permiss 
all of that because mm-hmm. there was good what's what are what are you guys thoughts on that um before before i answer that i want to just share something on the last question um yeah. the 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 main the big point for me with celebrity culture is that i think that it easily overlaps with with idolization i think that it gets very mm. very easy to like start idolizing someone just because you believe that they're a celebrity or you see them on on stage all the time that was that was what happened with with carl and um i think that not only is that a problem because obviously you know it's you know you shouldn't have false idols but i think more so the idea of like when we start idolizing people like we do anything to protect them like our idols can never do anything wrong like Carl Lentz did that? No, I don't believe Carl Lentz did that. Like, mm-hmm. let's just sweep it under the rug. Or like, he could never. Like, it's like we give them like we give them these extra boundaries, like to move around, um, because we see them as someone that's more important in our lives. So we could talk more about that, and we could talk about like the. I feel like I feel like part of the 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 celebrity culture is also the like the flashy, you know flashy cars flashy clothes you're on preachers and sneakers flexing the the louis v and like the gucci and everything that's a whole another conversation that we could dive into about stewardship and materialism but yeah we could talk about that a different time for this one um man i've heard that i've heard that that same um sentiment expressed like so many different times like who am I to say anything? Like, look at all the work they've done. Like, how come, how come our church is reaching people every Sunday? How come lives are being changed? And to like, I think if that's if that's the the stick that we're using, like, we're we're using the wrong stick, is what I'm trying to say. Because Mormons have people going to their church. Muslims have people going to their to their um, not synagogues. I forget what they're called. Temples. I forget. Maybe not temple. Mm-hmm. But the fact is that like other other churches, other denominations, other religions are still bringing in people. People that do a lot of harm are still I'm not saying that those religions, but I'm saying that like other Christian churches that have been like exposed for doing a lot of harm, they've mm-hmm. brought in people. Mark Driscoll still brings in people to his I church know. every yep. single Sunday. Believe there's, it or not, there's still people that still go to Hillsong. Um, Somebody got to the, the Mark Driscoll thing because it's it's once again it's the black thing. <laughs> like, <laughs> I guess oh, that's found out who he was a couple of a couple of years ago. <laughs> uh, Mark Driscoll, mm-hmm. yeah, he was big a couple years ago. Yeah, me and too. I didn't know who he was until like until Rise and Fall of Mars Hill podcast came it's, out. It's it's funny because like I don't know I don't I don't know what the heck happened in the 2010s. But like reformed theology became like a big thing, like for a lot of people for some reason. And he was kind of like at the front of that. He was pastoring a church called Mars Hill in Seattle. It was blowing up. And um he was he was like the ultra alpha male, basically, like mm. super aggressive, super confrontational. Um, and it ended up like just really being a lot of spiritual abuse and he ended up getting called out on it and his church fired him for it. And, um, there's like, you know, he said, she said, but, um, yeah, th- there's, there's a really good documentary or podcast series. Actually, if you haven't heard it, it's called the rise and fall of Mars Hill. Mike Casper, he actually narrates it and he was in the, the secrets of Hillsong documentary. And he, he has some great quotes. I, I wish I could read them all to you. He has some great quotes in that documentary talking about spiritual abuse. But if you haven't checked out that podcast, check it out. Um, it's it's a lot like the Hillsong one. You'll see a lot of parallels. You'll probably get triggered, to be honest. Um, but this mm. one goes way more in depth because there's like maybe 15 episodes and they're all like yeah. an hour long. Like yeah. it, They're really detailed and they're really well done. Um, it's by Christianity Today, but I'll I'll do it later on. I, I still need to cleanse my palate from the Hill song. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah, I don't blame you. <laughs> yep. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah. Back to that question. Hey, yeah, I get I get irked when people ask or say things like that because I think that 
we're using the wrong stick to to measure the church like kind of i kind of almost feel like it says like what's more important people's lives being changed and the numbers that we're putting up each sunday or like this one person that was abused whether it be spiritually or sexually or whatever well really like the person that was abused like that's very serious and important like these 200 other people can find other churches god is not gonna like not be able to reach them because your church wasn't able to do it that sunday like you are not the only church that can reach one person or these people or a specific demographic yeah um Mm -hmm. Um, what do you think i think that oh man um i think that and and ish i want you to say the quote again so i want to i want to make sure that um yeah it's uh god's god's hand must be upon it if they have so much success um i don't think that that's true but i do think that there's truth in it Mm -hmm. um because go let's go back to the early church um the early church and i i i constantly go back to the early church because um jesus came to do two things in the earth he came to die for our sins uh and offer himself as a spotless lamb and he came to establish the church um and so this whole idea that like God, I can be a Christian and I don't need the church. Well, talk to Jesus about that because he thinks it's a pretty big deal. Mm-hmm. Um, but having said all of that, the church has always been bickering. It's always been perverted. It's always been flawed mm. from the very beginning. Mm. Um, when the when all the souls came in and um, and basically everybody was selling everything that they had and mm-hmm. and, jo- and joining one body and living for the church um it, and the the big picture of that is oh man i'm i'm about to lie because i didn't look it up i should while y'all were talking i should have looked it up that's what i should have did but I, <laughs> it's Acts six i think with ananias and sapphira, sapphira. yeah so what was going on in the church right that like the church was like it like it was popping you know souls being added daily all of that good stuff uh uh, peter them they're running the church but they're running they're running the money terribly right (laughs) they are running the money terribly as a matter of fact if we were if we were to call it a modern day thing it was communism The church, they was running the church as communists. Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. they would take everything that everybody had, put it in mm-hmm. one pot, and divide yeah. it. That's communism. Distribute it, distribute it equally. Yep. And mm-hmm. that's communism. And and um and later on, uh God God told Peter, hey, yeah, that's not the way to go. <laughs> you know, let's let's tweak this thing. Um but <laughs> what's the the interesting part about that is that so when ananias and safari and i always mess her name up when they came to give to because everybody else was giving and they came and they're like yeah i'm not gonna give everything because that's crazy (laughs) Uh, so they kept a little bit back and then people like hey why didn't you give everything you're like yeah no we did give everything you lied to Mm -hmm. not me you God. lied to the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Drop dead. Then uh, I think Sapphira died first. And then Ananias came in. Or, and then, you know, same thing, you know, boom, both mm-hmm. of them dead. So mm-hmm. why would God, why would God execute such harsh judgment for those two, but not for Peter, who was basically Hitler? <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Reason, reason being, at least I think so, is that Peter's heart was right. His mm. methods were wrong. Mm. As long mm. as your heart is right, you can always change the method. Mm. But Ananias, as far as their yeah. heart was wrong. Mm-hmm. And yeah. 
and while it was and while the church was growing in it, in its infancy and so vulnerable like a wrong heart could kill the whole thing that's really good so i'm going to i'm going to take out the bad motive before i take out the bad method mm. Mm, so that's good so I, i'm saying yeah. all, i'm saying all that to say that because a church is successful and things are and things are not right morally it doesn't mean that god's not going to honor what's happening but mm -hmm. there is definitely going to be judgment to the people who are mishandling mm -hmm. god mm -hmm. because one thing I, god cares about is his people yeah yep i i think back to go back to the mars hill and mike casper he continually points out the what he calls a profound question and it is basically the idea because i don't remember word for word but it's like why does god continue to move in these spaces like in these spaces where people right. are are being harmed or taken advantage of and things are quote let's just say toxic um like god continues to move in them and what do we do with that because it's not okay that these issues are happening but yet god is still moving so what is it what does it say about god and then what do we do with that i i can't help but think about that and i also mm -hmm like that you pointed out um like the responsibility i think you had said this gerald right now the responsibility um that the leaders in church still have for the things that they do um because that was something they talked about in the in the episode and i i wanted to spend uh time talking about it but we have other questions but um this is like, such a good show y'all it, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a good one that that man i like one of the pastors talks about how like when people came in, he saw crowds and not individuals and how he realized how he had had it all wrong and how he, he ultimately realized that one day, like they're going to be held accountable for that. And I feel like people know that, or people say that, but to like really understand, like after everything is said and done and you realize that like, Hey, I was a part of something that was harming a lot of people. Like, how do you, how do you like process that? Like, how do you, how do you sleep at night? Really like thinking like, damn, like I, I'm going to be held accountable to with God. Like when it's all said and done for the work that I did and the harm that I caused. We could, yeah. You know what, as you were saying that, you know what I, you know what I thought of? I, I thought of David. Mm -hmm. I thought of David and, and every, right. you know, um, for, for every worship leader, every musician, David is our guy. <laughs> that would <be> like <laughs> yeah. You're the, you're the guy, you're the Christian that's bringing up David as a, as a, as a worship leader. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. And, you always, and if somebody or Satan or sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I said it just popped in my mind. <laughs> no. Yeah. But, but like if some but if somebody's like, oh yeah, you got a spirit of David on you, you're like, yeah, that's me. <laughs> um how's your wife? <laughs> oh my god. Sorry, I'd say <laughs> David, um David had a David David had a self control problem, and David had a woman problem, um, mm -hmm. and David was a man after God's own heart. So what do we do with that? Let me say this, um, and don't get me wrong, David was the man, like he absolutely was, um, and I, I heard somebody say this one time, like how was how did David do so much wrong and still garner the favor of God so much. Um, mm -hmm. It's not when he was writing those Psalms, not, it's not that he was not himself and it's not that he was lying. He he very much meant the stuff that he wrote and said. Mm -hmm. um, when he was doing, he was doing with Bathsheba and God, Rocket, he very much so meant to do it. You know what I mean? So like there are different degrees of, of a person but I don't think that the church talks about that. But that's not the point. What I wanted to say was that David was David, the man after God's own heart. But David also was not allowed to finish the temple 
because he had so much blood on his hands. Hmm. Yeah. He was king, but he wasn't anointed to finish mm -hmm. because of the choices that he made. And I think that that's a, um, I, you know, God is, I don't, I don't think that God is a fair God, but I think that God is a just God. And, yes. and he, mm -hmm. he will allow you to reign in public but have very private moral failures. Hmm. Hmm. Like, but, and then, but like, it's like, dude, like, what's the answer to that? I don't know. God is sovereign, you know, he, he's God. <laughs> so we can't tell him like, oh God, you shouldn't do that. What? <laughs> you know what I mean? But at yeah. the same time, I do know that um, it always comes back to this. Uh, God cares. God does. God doesn't care about your ministry, but he does care about his people. Mm -hmm. And he'll mm -hmm. always watch over his people. So, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's a tough one. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah, man. I do want to, before we go to the next question, Ish, I want to read that quote that we have. Um, and it's from one of the, it's, it's a survivor of Frank Houston quoting his parents when he basically approached his parents and told them like, Hey, this man has been sexually abusing me. Um, basically his parents told him, and I quote, you don't want to be responsible for turning people from the church and sending them to hell. And I, I want to point this out because I think that when, when we have the whole like sentiment or idea that like if God's hands is upon it, they're having so much success, like what's the problem? I think sometimes, um, congregates or, or church members could start covering from the church like look they're doing so much work like like i said what's more important is it that one person or is it to 200 um and we and we come up with sayings like do you want to be responsible for these people you know their lives not being changed when really our, par our priorities are wrong and and it's sad to know that like those are his parents bro like think about yeah. think about how invested they must have been into the church to tell their own son like it's yeah. a like no and it, yeah. and it, part part of me gets triggered by that because i i don't want to go into too much detail but i feel like yeah i've been told that same thing like i don't believe it he's cut from a different cloth like i don't believe it he would never do that like bro that's so blood like yeah. And that's, that's so funny because like I'm like I really do feel like that I'm just like the naivest person in the world like in this like how can you as a Christian say that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like yeah. and it it that all that always bothers me but at the same time I think that's one of the things that I pray that God never takes away from me that 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 childlike revelation of right and wrong mm -hmm. and i i mean i think sometimes we get older and like we get introduced to so many different shades of gray um that we don't you we we stumble over the words to definitively say what is a right thing and what is a wrong thing i mm -hmm. i pray that the church doesn't lose that mm. Like, even if we decide to do wrong, let's at least know what wrong is. Yeah. And um, it's 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 scary that somebody who is responsible for our soul mm. doesn't take mm. doesn't take right and wrong more seriously. Mm -hmm. Like, how do I listen to you on Sunday morning? You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like that's why that's part of the reason. Like so many PKs, they're like, eh, I ain't fooling with church." Because mm. yeah, I know, I know what happens on Saturday. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do y'all know the story of C.L. Franklin, Aretha Franklin's dad? No, I don't. Mm -mm. Okay, see, it's just the black and the that. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> this is yep. <laughs> okay. Different world. Different world. Okay, so. Um, Aretha Franklin, the Queen of Soul. Oh yeah, R E S P E C T. 
find out what it means to me. Natural woman. Um, her dad was C. L. Franklin. Um, at the time, um, C. L. Franklin would be he would be comparable to uh, who T. D. Jakes is today. <laughs> he was the man. As a matter of fact, um, he would um, he would, for the lack of a better term, he would warm up the crowds in the Martin Luther King rallies in the mm-hmm. Super Bowl. Oh, okay. Wow. Mm-hmm. It's a big, big deal. Wow, mm-hmm. yeah. He was one of the biggest swindlers in the church. <laughs> and it was widely known. Like, wow. every, um, every Saturday, every Saturday night at his house, it would be something akin to gambling in a brothel. Wow. At his house. And shoot. And all those same people would come to his church on Sunday morning. <laughs> to repent. Wow. No, no, no. Wow. <laughs> no, not to repent. <laughs> to collect the offerings. <laughs> Just go because to recover the recover the losses from the previous night. Yeah. Because because as black folk, that's what you did on Sunday morning. You went to mm-hmm. church. Right, right. Mm-hmm. No mm-hmm. matter what. So, um, man, I, I said all I said all that to say that, like, um, perversion in the church is way more common than what we actually want to admit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then, like, what do you what do you do with that as as a Christian? But that's a Another topic for yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's a big one to tackle. Yeah, that's um, that's why you don't want to idolize the Carl Lenses, the yeah. the mm-hmm. the T D Jakes, uh the big like any pastor really, any person, you don't want to idolize them. You don't if they're not pointing you back to Jesus and making sure that you're not idolizing the Lord, then there's something wrong there, man. And that's why I have such a huge problem with these like bigger churches, celebrity, you know, people. Um, I'm just like, are you <laughs> talking about the one that matters? Or are you talking about yourself and how you grew up and how you couldn't <laughs> like talk over the phone and, or something like that? Like, I don't care about that. I want Jesus. Yeah. Talk and to your me book. about the person that matters. You know? Mm-hmm. So. So, yeah. So um, our, our last and final question um, in the documentary, they mentioned two different people that that were uh, a part of the everyday, um, the, every service, I guess you would say, at Hillsong. There are two people that made everything uh, that flow, made everything flow, sorry. Mm-hmm. It was the unpaid, or I'm sorry, the unhappy, or the happy, sorry, and the exploited. So two different groups, the happy and the exploited. What are your thoughts on on that statement, that idea, and any personal experiences as the happy or the exploited? <sighs> that says it all. That says it all. Let's. Well, thanks, guys, for coming to Manassa. Tune <laughs> in next week. Oh man. The, um. Okay. So there's two. I I have two. I have two sides to the brain on this and um and I don't I don't know if y'all will 100% like one side of it. So mm-hmm. I, I beg y'all forgiveness. Um part of it part of it is that um can we really look into what's exploitation? Mm-hmm. Um because it's only exploitation well that's not true but for the sake of this it's only exploitation once you put the word exploitation on it (laughs) but like Mm -hmm. you're rocking and rolling when you're all in when you're you know this whole thing then it's not exploitation it's Mm serving so Mm -hmm. is it exploitation because you feel disgruntled i don't know Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i don't know but i think Mm -hmm. it's 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 low hanging fruit because I, I don't know how y'all feel about it. I don't know how the people out there listening feels about it, but 
I feel like who uh, the director of this documentary had a axe to grind with Christianity. Yep, that's very true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And Hillsong just happens to be the manifestation of everything that they had a problem with. But mm-hmm. um, I don't know if you've been to church lately. It's a lot of volunteers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and mm-hmm. the bigger the church, the more volunteers you need. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I don't know if you've dealt with money anytime soon in the past, but if you pay everybody who's doing something in the church, you ain't going to have no money. Mm-hmm. That's just, mm-hmm. dude, like if you if you pay every usher that you have a salary, if you pay every uh, kids worker that you have as a salary, if you pay every parking lot attendant that you have a salary, you know, if you pay, you know, the worship thing, the band, I'll, you know, it's y'all are super, and Ruben too. Yeah, that's right. Oh yeah, y'all too. Y'all are super arrogant, so y'all want way more money than everybody else anyway. <laughs> so that's like, true. <laughs> if you, I'm not cheap. <laughs> <laughs> like, look at the stand-up bass in the background. <laughs> I can barely play that thing. By the way. It, it, oh, by the way, it's my, it's my, uh, it's my church's. By the way, my church gave it. Uh, well, lend it to me so really? I can learn how to play it. So, they lent it to you. Wow. You didn't go back. <laughs> yeah, it's not going back. <laughs> Sorry, Brad. Sorry, Brad. <laughs> Shout out to Brad. But um, so you take you take all of that, and then you multiply it by people mm-hmm. thinking that they're doing a good thing by giving three dollars in the offering every <laughs> every time if they give that. Like, oh yeah, I'm a, I'm a I'm gonna believe God and give God this five. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So like there's not a there's not a whole bunch of money coming in and you mm-hmm. want everybody being paid. It ain't going to work. Mm-hmm. So there is that there is a sense of because I believe in this thing. I'm giving my time, my talent, my treasure to that. That is a thing. Mm-hmm. And it's Absolutely. very easy to say that they were exploiting me when I I'm not a part of it anymore. So I, I think that's I, I think that's the part that's like, OK, let's I understand what exploitation is, but let's look into your case and let's see if that's exploitation or you gave. Right. And then it didn't work out. And now you mm-hmm. moved on. So mm-hmm. that thing. second thing is, yeah, the Hillsong was exploiting those folks. <laughs> 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 I say that to say, <laughs> dude, seven, and, uh, seven services and one Sunday, dude. <laughs> People getting turned away. Like I, I can't, I can't lie. I thought you were. Yeah, I was about to like, oh, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to work this out right now because I don't agree. Like I thought, I thought you were about to say, yeah, I don't see like the problem with the Hillsong thing, but. Yeah, no, he was on with turning. You, 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 you really got me with that one. Cause because I mean, the the problem is like it's one thing to have like a bunch of churches, I mean a bunch of volunteers, and like you know, you can tell the church is like struggling to make ends meet. Like yeah. the pastor is not getting paid, no one's getting paid. You guys are like you guys are having church in the park, like you can tell like when a church is struggling, but when <laughs> and, and I want to point out like the findings that the that the I, I don't know if it was the Royal Commission or after that, but he talked about how they had shopping sprees, how they went on vacations, how they spent over four thousand dollars on skateboards, million and, dollar and the, credit limit for Brian, yeah, Pastor Brian. Bro, and the fact that they had a quote from Brian Houston saying this 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 really irked me. He said he said I don't get like with all the good work that we do. How come people can't overlook me having a watch and a motorcycle? He's like, I don't, I don't really live like this excessive affluent life. And and maybe, maybe he didn't at that point when that when that quote was said. But mm-hmm. later on, that's exactly what it became what it became, them having uh vacations when you know they're facing legal issues, sending off their dad to vacation when like he just abuse all these people for all these years and like now we're going to send them a vacation because we got the money to do it like that that's where the problem is like 
but you know what? I I have the problem because I've always been a advocate for the preacher to have money. I have, mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. because okay, I have. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of it's a lot of work. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. but my advocacy comes more so from the the preacher who has things. Well, it, it, you know, if you if 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 you got a church like that, then you, earn, you know, get your salary, get mm-hmm. your salary. And I, I was, mm-hmm. like most most of the preachers who are like, you know, above the fray, you know, I'm not saying that this is a criteria or anything, but most of the, you know, above reproach preachers, they're like, yeah, I don't really take a salary or I take a very minimal one, you know, whatever mm-hmm. the case. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm I'm for the preacher having a lot of money who has things going on like if yeah, yeah. if if said preacher writes a book not not a book from not 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 from the church like gerald davis book this is how you go to heaven you know and i sell <laughs> one billion copies <laughs> i should not be obligated to give that money all back to the church oh yeah you know what For i mean sure. And if I like if I'm a real estate mogul and I'm killing a real estate game and I get a million dollars every every three weeks, you think I'm going to have a civic just so people think that I don't know. You, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that there there is variables in that, mm-hmm. but it's a very ugly look that, mm-hmm. you know, like, dude, why? why is you you got to know what you're walking into because if you mm-hmm. have three thousand dollar shoes on people are going to say hey mm-hmm. where'd you get that three thousand mm-hmm. dollars mm-hmm. you better have an answer <laughs> yep and and to be clear in the in the documentary they they did clarify like these were this was church money like this was money that that they told is going to the poor but clearly was not going to the poor just wanted to, to yeah. point it out okay thank you for that because that's what i'm that's what I'm, like if it's corrupt, it, you know, if it's corrupt, it's corrupt. Yeah. And, yeah. It, and the whole Hillsong shebang was corrupt. The, I thought one of, and I, I'll relinquish the flow on this point. But I, I thought that what was so funny was that Brian and Houston was just doing the work of the Lord until he came to America. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yep. Yep. He came to America. Mm-hmm. And got with these American preachers, and they talk about to swindle the people out of the money. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it goes back to Australia. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And it all, you know, so it's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm, y'all, come on, America. That's uh, yep. That's uh, falls a doctrine for you. That's what happens when uh, when something like that is like rampant and um. You just start putting something of fo- the focus on something else that's not that's not Christ, is not Jesus, you know. And um, it, it's funny to me because Brian seemed like he was just a nerdy guy, like not really, you know, much yeah. of like a, a presence in a sense, you know. So I think his lack of um, confidence in who God called him, and then also. Because he's a preacher. I mean, he's a pastor. It, it looked like he was on that road. Like he definitely was that. And um, sometimes insecurities sneak in and you overcompensate and then you start stressing out him even having the anxiety pills. Dude, that's a huge red flag. I don't look, man. I don't care. I don't care if you have like uh, tons of churches and like they're all working fine and all if you have to have anxiety pills, there's a problem there. And it, I, I, I understand that there's like chronic issues and people just, they're not built like that. But if you're like focusing on like anxiety pills because you're just taking on too much work or it's too stressful to run an organization like that, bro, I don't think you should be doing that then. Mm-hmm. And that goes back to like everything else that you guys were talking about, about like if, if there's so much good being done, like what, you know, how, why can't we just like let this pass by? It's because it's not sustainable. Like it's, it's just not mm-hmm. you, you can't keep on doing this because eventually like Carl Lentz, you're, you're, 
the way that you deal with your problems, anxiety, uh, stress, it'll go back to unhealthy things because you're doing something unsustainable that you were not really meant to do at all at the, at the beginning of it all, you know? And that's why I think with the whole music thing and like the, I guess the unpaid volunteers totally side with you on that, uh, Gerald. Cause I, I, I think there's a lot of room for that. Um, most churches I would say have volunteers and most churches won't be able to really pay their staff. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and I, and, I, and I, I totally get that. And, and I, and I, and I, and I love that. I love serving uh, a church. I love serving my church. Yeah. Um, no problem with that. There was a point. Let me let me say real quick. There was a point yeah. uh, because I've I've been playing at a I played at a church uh, piano uh, mm -hmm. since oh my lord since um oh man what like eighteen nineteen or something like that mm -hmm. um and you know I played for a lot. There got to a point where um I I didn't I didn't take money from a church anymore because I didn't like what came with it. Not because I didn't like the money, but I didn't like what came with it. Mm. but another conversation for another time yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, that, yeah it's just not sustainable it's my point like what like even when you're getting paid and it's not it comes with strings attached and it yep. comes with things of exploitation of even not maybe your workload but you as a resource as a person like that in itself like whether it's emotional toil or like whatever it is that's still exploitation in a sense you know mm -hmm. and um and it's just not sustainable and so when people when you grow to a certain point and you can't pay like your senior like your staff the certain people and and you're starting ball balling out of control because dude this happens everywhere this happens in, in in churches this also happens in in businesses where like you know the leaders it grows out of control it grows ex a massive explosion and really only the top is really getting any any um any compensation for all the work and now like you know there's no there's no compensation back to the rest of the of the group in the team and i guess you call that america or cor the corporate america whatever but in a sense like that's again that's a correlation between the church a mega church and a corporation they're run a lot really similar and you can't do that you have to spread the the wealth of the giving so that people can sustain their life and 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 as the church needs grow so can you be fulfilling those key people in the church that need to be more available you know that's just my thing there's so much that i yeah. would like to say but i'm refraining there's so much we could talk about um and i just had something that was on the tip of my tongue dang it Okay, I'll, I'll say it real quick. Um, over, over. So, it's Ruben, and like, I mean, take a long time or as shortest time as you want. Do you think that people should expect to make a living off of church salaries? Mm. No, I don't. I don't, I don't think, think so. necessary. Okay, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. But how many of us do? How many of us expect to like? Because I think that's a lot of the reason, especially in the, especially in the band world. Like that one guy that was, oh man, that was so sad to me. And he's like, now I'm an atheist and I'm a happy atheist. Right. Oh, that was right. so. That broke my. That broke my heart. That yeah. broke my heart. Um, yeah. but a a a lot of us especially on the musical side, we see, and this is CCM world, this is gospel world, this is black world. We see, man, if I can get to that big church, that's going to be my payday and mm -hmm. I can do this for a living. Sure. I've heard that a lot from musicians. So I'll, um, hmm. I'll volunteer for the exploitation with the sense with the hope that one day I can make a full time mm -hmm. living out of this. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't think that um, you should be making a living off of it. Um, just right off. Just, just that one thing. Um, yeah. But again, like if it's requiring more 
and like a person that's spending their whole week working in the church or like preparing music and stuff like that. Like I, dude, I've, I knew musicians that they spend their whole week, like writing up whole or, you know, arrangements because, you know, Sunday is just that big, you know, it's, yeah. it's a, it requires a lot of work and it's almost like a conference level, you know, event in a sense. Um, I think for those people, I believe that there is somewhat a case to be made about compensation that they can right. sustain their life because to be, I mean, honest, if, if they're just focusing only on that, then what else are they going to do? There's no other time to acquire more resources other ways. And, and that's the decision of like the pastor or the, the staff that needs to have a, a conversation with this person because it's like, okay, I could give this amount uh, or the church can give this amount. That's that's what we budgeted. That's what we can sustainably give you. Yeah. And yeah. and then that musician or whoever it is needs to figure out, okay, I'm going to do this. Okay. I, or you know what? No, I could, I, if you're going to give me that amount, I'm going to give you 20 hours a week. And that's, and that's like a good deal. And then that needs to be a relationship and there shouldn't be no bl bad blood between the two because each one gave up to what their capacity can give. And mm -hmm. that's where I think a lot of people don't, don't, I don't, I, I see musicians get this wrong where they're like, Oh no, screw them. And they get all hurt because they're, they're just not, yeah. not good enough to, to, to fill that role. Right. Mm -hmm. Or the, the church that they're talking mad crap about a musician that needs to make a living that this person wants to get married. They want to have a family. They can't sustain mm -hmm. their life. If, and, and you're over here like bashing them because they can't play regularly on your service, like 200 bucks a service is not going to do a lot to mm -hmm. that person's wealth yeah. and their family. You know, it's not going to do it. So that conversation needs to be there. I think, I think that, um, um, I think I think that the the church musician, the the modern day in the modern day, I mean, like the last 30, 40 years, I think that the church musician dynamic has always been a broken one. And mm -hmm. and you nobody's going to end happy. Because. If 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 for what for what. Well, for what's required of an MD, for what's required of a mm. of a choir director, of a somebody who carries the bulk of the music, um, it's it is a full time job. Mm -hmm. Like when the Hillsong folks were saying that is a full time, yeah, I mean it is, it is. I think it was a full time job at Hillsong. But I, I don't think that you were complaining about that when you were taking those selfies on the uh, stage in Madison Square Garden. We're out here just serving the Lord, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So don't you weren't completely the victim in all of this. Understood. Um, if you weren't able to leverage your Hillsong gig to something else as a musician, what, mm -hmm. what were you doing? You, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? You That's just some bad decisions. But... Um, <laughs> Like for somebody who the the let, I'll, let me say this um, in my pre, so in my previous roles when I was teaching music um, I think that I was so successful at it because I did so much that nobody like ever saw or really even <laughs> tried to do because they thought it was just way too much for every song that I taught. I wrote out every single note for every single part mm. every single time. And that took like, that took like, you know, six, seven hours before I would even get to rehearsal. And that's just the notes. And then like learning the intricacies and all of that good stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then th that's not being a husband. That's not going to work. That's not, you know, all of that good stuff. That's not counseling people. That's, all of that stuff so it's a full-time job so by the time you actually and y'all can attest to this that by the time the musician actually who cares let me say that <laughs> by the time the musician who cares actually get to rehearsal after a full day of work after full day or whatever you're never at 100 mm -hmm. yeah 
like the church mm-hmm. never got 100 percent of us right right because yeah. like, you know the the day drained 60 percent of you mm-hmm. right and sure, traffic right. took out 15 percent you know what i mean and then yeah you, and then you got to come in and give and then they expect 100 percent is is not it's not sustainable. It's not. So I do believe that every church that's large enough that to do it, they should have a full time band. Yeah. Um, but, you know, yeah. but you got to pay them. But the, the mm-hmm. only problem with America is that America believes in capitalism. They want the most mm-hmm. and pay the least. That's the same mm-hmm. thing with the church. Mm-hmm. That's not changing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. we're so we're saying we're saying that the church, you know, we're saying that the church is exploiting us. Yeah, but your job is exploiting you, dude. Your CEO mm-hmm. is making <laughs> five billion dollars and paying you thirty five thousand. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Bro, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. This is America. This is America. <laughs> yeah. So, yep. so the, the, the things that you're saying, and, and it's valid, the things that you're saying that, man, this church is doing me so wrong and stuff like that is the stuff that you're signing up for. And yes, people should be, and yes, the leadership should be so much responsible for your life because it's not a corporation it's it it is a body of christ but at the same time it's a corporation and if you think mm-hmm. that it's not a corporation once you you're get fooling yourself. Time, you're fooling yourself yeah you're fooling yourself for sure you're fooling yourself so mm-hmm. if you so you should in business let's be men <laughs> so if you're going into this corporation and you have a specific talent that somebody can't walk up and do, i.e. play a guitar, i.e. play, you know, stuff like that. If you have that, then negotiate what you're willing to do and bake in all the time and the frustration and stuff like that into your negotiation. Mm -hmm. So when you do have to do it, you're like, okay, well, I'm getting paid for it. So so you're not that bitter, but I, I mean, I know this isn't that, but like you said, is there is a lot of ways to keep yourself from being as hurt because you think mm. you think that oh man, this is my church; they're supposed to take care of me. No, because the church mm. is more than likely they're probably terrible with money. Mm. Most are <laughs> probably so. Anyway, mm. it's my take. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm, I'm sure we could continue on for. <laughs> Another hour or so. They're listening to us, y'all. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's, there's even more stuff that we have on the on the outline to talk about, but it's there's just so much. Um, but I, we're we're coming up on almost two hours, and um, oh, Lord, I think we've I think we've done a lot, said a lot. Um, any concluding thoughts that you guys want to share, real quick? I do have a quote I want to leave everyone with, but any any concluding thoughts from either of you? Um, I mean, I'll go first. Um, just thank y'all for having me. Uh, it's Ruben. I really, really appreciate it for this time. And, um, um, I mean, I, I, I love, I love God's people. Um, I am <sighs> the Hillsong thing breaks my heart because there's so many souls that are just like drifting now. And like, if if there if Hillsong New York was running like you know thirty thousand people, and like I think the number now was like it's like five hundred or something like that, then yeah. it's like you know twenty nine thousand people that are hurt and they're like I'm I'm not doing mm-hmm. church anymore like that's mm-hmm. like I wouldn't yeah. wish any person to have to live with that, and that's something mm-hmm. that Carl Lynch has to live with. Um, mm. that it's heavy, man. But like, I I pray that those people don't blame God. Mm. I I I pray that they don't, and I know that some will. But I like I pray that they don't, and probably, and I know this sounds almost blasphemous to say, but like, I I pray that they give God another chance, mm. mm-hmm. because God is so good and the people who handled them were terrible 
And they got a they got a thing coming on Judgment Day because God don't play about His people. But like, mm-hmm. I I pray that God can use those people who were hurt to go back into a culture and say, "Hey, this is what happened when I went to a celebrity church." Mm-hmm. And you should still definitely love God, but don't put these people on pedestals and don't give your whole life to this organization without any other type of balance because you're setting your man you're setting yourself up for so much hurt because no matter how into one thing that you are one day eventually you won't be into it that much anymore and if your whole life is built around that and then that that thing falls now you have no life and that's a terrible way to live Jesus said that I come that you may have life and that you may have that more abundantly. Mm-hmm. And go learn how to ski. <laughs> go play pickleball. <laughs> you know what I mean? Go go play chess or something like that. Don't wake up <laughs> your whole life. And this is probably my this is probably my big takeaway. I don't I don't I don't care about Hill Song. I don't care about the staff. I don't care about Brian Houston. I pray that justice is served. I don't care about those. I care about the people. I I pray that people give their whole life to God, but don't give their whole life to the church. Mm. Mm. That's my takeaway. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, The documentary was a little biased on Christianity. Um, The first thing I want to say is that this is not, the church like it's not the representation of what what god intended and what jesus lived it's not who we are and we're imperfect of course we, we're humans we have issues with like everything from like anger pride to sexuality um there's so many things that are in between that are not always going to be clear and it's not going to be all so white and black and um, expect to go into a church and find imperfect people, right? Expect it. Like that's absolutely it. But also know that there are actual communities, Christian communities, churches that are not trying to build a reputation They're not trying to build a brand. They're not trying to buy an LED screen for for like the next big event. They don't have a bunch of people on flyers trying to exalt themselves on it. (laughs) They're not. They're not trying to just ask for like, dude, these last two, three Sundays, my church forgot to ask uh, to to pick up offering. (laughs) <laughs> and it just it hit me. We just forgot. It just it was the thing that just like passed off. It it's not a, a offering every single like every single segment. Uh, mm, not every mm. church is like that. We're we are not like that. Not every single church is. And, and it, there's nothing wrong with giving. I'm not, and that's not that's not what I'm saying. I am saying is that thing that feels weird in your church or in the churches that you may have gone. It is weird. Because it's not, it's not supposed to be like that. You should be loved. You should feel welcome. But also you should be learning and drawing closer to the God. And also you should feel like there's something that needs to change with inside you. But you don't, you may not know what it is. And don't feel ashamed about it. Because you can share about that with those people that love you for sure. Because they're not trying to build anything. They're not trying to build a reputation. They love you because there's God in you. And that's the thing that I kind of just take away from all this, of uh, like the Hillsong thing. This is happening around the world. Like I have friends in Guatemala and Central America that are going through this same crap. Um, and it's nothing different. But what I am saying is that the church that you're seeing – portrayed on these documentaries absolutely true but also not entirely don't you can't generalize us like that we're we're not all like this and um 
and I do hope, like what Gerald said, I do hope and pray that um, that God is God is given that opportunity in their life again. So, you know. I don't I don't really have too many closing thoughts, but I do want to read a quote from I believe it was Mike Casper uh, in the in the documentary, and he says, part of the devastation that happens when these churches fall apart is that people sort of wake up to their own complicity and they see that they are a part of something so toxic and damaging that they're not only trying to reconcile with themselves, they're also trying to reconcile with their faith. I uh, think that's a good quote uh, to really let marinate um, over yourselves for the next day or so. And I also want to read a small quote um there was there was a part in the documentary there where there were these five women i believe that uh got together and wrote a letter to the to the leadership of hillsong new york mm -hmm. and they're reading it and one of them says in the in the letter or the email that they sent to the to the leadership um she says this church is our dream too and i want to say that as a reminder that like we're not doing this or talking about this stuff because we hate the church. Like the church is our dream too. Like mm. we want the church to be healthy. We want the church yes. to be a place that I don't have to look back and be like, damn, I don't want to go there. Like mm -hmm. I feel, I feel salty about this. Like I don't want to talk to these Christians or like, I feel weird about this. Like this is our dream too, bro. Like we're Christians. Yeah, we want to, sure. we want to see a healthy church. We want to see a thriving church. Um, Heck yeah, man. And we, like i don't at the end of the day i don't think anybody wants to see a documentary about another another christian group um of people that like were just all basically damaged because yeah. if if you listen if you watch the documentary i don't think a single one of those people said that they go to church still to this day all of them said that they don't go to church anymore mm -hmm. and that's like i don't think that's any different from like like, I don't think that's a bad representation of, of people that get hurt by the church. I don't think a lot of people that get hurt by the church are going to other churches. I think a lot of times they just stop going to church. Um, so, yeah, I yeah, we could keep going. But um, thank you, Gerald, so much for joining us. It was it was really a pleasure having you. Um, you brought a lot of life to our podcast, a lot of jokes, a lot of fun. Um is there any uh, socials or anything that you want to share with the audience, um, your music, anything that you would want to share them with? Yeah, with I, I, man, I do way too much stuff. Um, so um, I have a podcast called Lunch with the Cool Kids where I'm not the cool kid. You are. And um, I, <laughs> I am a Christian, but we don't talk about exclusively Christian things because we are more than one thing. Mm -hmm. So, um, mm -hmm. you know. Oh, uh, please check it out. Lunch with the cool kids. Um, you can you can follow me at Gerald Davis Art um, on on Instagram, Twitter, whatever, uh, TikTok. I'm, I'm <laughs> terrible at TikTok, y'all. Don't judge me. Uh, <laughs> um, special shout out. I have a song out uh, right now. It's called "Let It Rain" by Gerald Davis, and it is fabulous because I'm a talented individual. Um, that you are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> But no, I man, listen, I um I, I appreciate you guys. I appreciate this this opportunity. It was like it was heavy, but it was fun at the same time. And um mm -hmm. and I I appreciate what you guys are doing. And I'll I'll say this and I'll probably I'll probably ruin this whole two hours by what I'm about to say right now. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> um I think that people who may know you from you know past experiences past experiences they may think that you that you guys like hate the church or this is a mm -hmm. form to bash it's not mm -hmm. it's not at all um and i pray that some of those people give you a chance and listen with an open heart and an open mind and like hear your heart. And, um, I, I, I pray that, um, a lot of the people who are like, man, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm done with church because of, you know, somebody stole my pie in 1998. I pray that, 
that <laughs> they can listen to your podcast and be like, oh, okay, that's what real abuse is. Like, mm-hmm. my power is just hurt feelings. Maybe I should, you know, go yeah. and figure this thing out. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, I think, I mean, I would say it, um, as long as the heart's pure, I think that God will elevate it to the people that needs to hear it. So once again, thank you all so much for this opportunity. Thanks, Gerald. Appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. Um, so until next time, guys, please tune in. Uh, remember, we're on YouTube and on uh, all all, pla- all podcast platforms. Sorry. So both visual and audio, doing both of them. Um, tune in next time. We'll have another special guest. Um, should be coming out the end of the month um so yeah thank you so much for tuning in and remember none of this is wasted we are still becoming who we are